What's up with you? For today's video, we're with full 100% critical hit moves Pokemon team. This is a little bit different from my critical hit moves team I did in the past because these moves have a 100% chance of always critting compared to something that has a chance. We got Wicker Blow, Surging Strikes, Frost Breath, and Storm Throw as the four moves to use. Now, if you do want to come and check me on Twitch, this is where I do all my live stream. I take all my battles here for my theme teams, Pokemon sweeps, uh, some shiny hunts. Give me a follow if you haven't already, and let's get into today's battles. I've got two battles today, and they're really, really cool. Uh, we got a battle. This one's against Zood again. I'm not really sure if that's the way to start, but uh, it was a pretty interesting battle. This one was on the White Cop, and we got a Garchomp lead. I've got a Nine Tails lead here, a Lola, and and we're going to be making use of the move Frostbeth on this set. So obviously the damaging moves I was only allowed to do damage was was like the 100% critting moves, right? I did have a couple of status moves to help out the strategies because it was pretty limited with four moves. So we got Aura Veil, Frost Breath, Nasty Plot, and Wonder Room, right? We got Max Speed and Max Special Attack Modest Nature. Now we got the guard jump swapping out here, and we got a Blissey coming in. So Blissey is going to be very, very good against all my special moves. However, this set is sort of designed to be a mix uh, attacker, right, with the Wonder Room. So Wonder Room, if you don't know, swaps the defense and special defense stats around. So I can actually hit this uh, Blissey on the defensive side. And as you know, Blissey's defense isn't very good at all. It's like two. Anyway, so we got the Blissey going for a Toxic there, and that's going to be poisoning my Nine Tails. Now I do need to get a little bit of more boost in uh, my special attack here if I want to take this Blissey out, right? And if they do swap, I do want to have as much special attack as possible here, right? But first, I'm not going to get my special attack rising really, really high. I'm going to be able to get two up here, and then I'm going to start to go for the Wonder Room and then attack the Frostbeth, right? So once again, uh, these boosts have a 100% crit ratio, right? It's not like a move, say, like um, Night Slash, right? That's not a 100% crit ratio. That only has a high chance of having a crit ratio, right? So that's how it's different to my past uh, critical hit teams, right? Actually, uh, Sword and Shield brought in two more 100% critical hit uh, move teams, which is really, really good because I can actually use them finally on a team, right? I, usually when I do like moves teams, I try to have at least four moves to use, right? So we're going to go for the Wonder Room there, swapping around the defense and special defense there. We got the Blissey going for a softball. I think they expected me to attack there, uh, which is fine there. Um, with the uh, swap in defense and special defense, I know that I can easily take Blissey out in one shot, right? Because it's the same. It's the special defense will become its defense, and its defense will become its special defense, right? So I can definitely uh, take that out easy in one shot there. Uh, go for the Frost Breath. It's not going to miss, and Blissey gets absolutely annihilated there with a critical hit right. Now, this stream was pretty it was pretty cool. There were some uh, ways to get around, like uh, some Pokemon, like Shell Armor could get around this, other things like that. But most of the time, I got critical hits absolutely everywhere, right? So, Nightiles is going to take some uh, more toxic damage there. The Aurora Veil is going to wear off. Next Pokemon, interesting enough, is the Garchomp. Now, unfortunately, since I'm running Modest Nature on this, Garchomp actually outspeeds me and takes me out with a Poison Jab. They were a bit lucky there I wasn't running Timid because most of the time I would be running Timid, but I wanted some like really, really like huge amount of special attack on Nine Tiles, right? Anyway, it is what it is. Down goes Blissey and uh well, that was pretty good uh, to get rid of Blissey with the Nine Tiles, right? So we got Urshfu here. We got Urshfu with the uh, Surging Strikes. Now, Surging Strikes crits every single time it hits, and it hits three times. I've also got Bulk Up on there as well to increase my attack and substitute and top. So we got the Garchomp going for a Sword Dance here. I need to take this thing out really, really quick. The only thing I was a little bit worried about is if it did have, like, Rocky Helmet and it had, like, Rough Skin, that would be doing a lot of damage to me. However, I just wanted to do some damage to it and hopefully, uh, you know, maybe Revenge KO with one of my other Pokemon, right? Now, we got the first size Surge Strikes doing uh, pretty good damage to Garchomp there. Garchomp's got pretty good defense. I actually probably needed one more attack boost to take this thing out in one shot there. Anyway, I got three quarters of Garchomp's uh, health away. I was pretty happy with that. Now, Garchomp is going to obviously attack me there. It's going to be going for a Scale Shot. Now, Scale Shot is a Dragon-type move, and it can hit them two to five times there. Uh, they only need to hit me two times, and they're going to boost their speed by one stage. However, it is going to drop the defense of the Garchomp, which is going to be kind of handy here. Now, I don't have a lot to actually stop this Garchomp, and Wonder Room also finishes uh, as well after its five turns. We're going to go to throw here. This is my bulk up, uh, bulk up throw here. Max health and max special events. We've got Storm Throw, which is a fighting move, which always crits, and we've got Rest and Sleep Talk too. Now, I definitely couldn't go for bulk up here 
The next hit was going to be really, really powerful. Uh, they could even Dynamax too. They're not going to Dynamax. They're going to go for an Earthquake here. I went for the Circle Throw to take them. A throw, not the Circle Throw. The Storm Throw. Getting my throw moves mixed up there. That wasn't even a joke. And I'm going to take out the Guard Chomp. Unfortunately for me though, the Ruskin is also going to take out my throw at the same time. So it was a double KO there. I'm just really, really glad that I got rid of that Guard Chomp, right? So down goes Throw, but Throw does make a pretty nice appearance in the second battle. Now, the next Pokemon to come in is the uh, Varascootie. I think they're running... I think they might be... Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are German Pokemon names. I could be wrong. Uh, people that know uh, those German Pokemon names, let me know in the comment section. I'm pretty sure I got it right this time. So now we're going to go to Toxmex. You're probably thinking, wait, these moves aren't 100% crit. However, I'm going to actually put something interesting into this team, right? Since there's only four moves that can crit, I thought... I've got to run six Pokemon, right? Let's see if I can run 100% crit uh, moves on this too. Now, Toxmex has the ability Merciless, right? Now, Merciless, if the opponent is poisoned, right, all your moves will become critical hits. So I thought, well, that could be a good way of acting. Maybe some little bit more of variety into this team. You know, only having like four single moves was pretty hard, right? So we've got a special Toxmex here with Life Orb. I've got Max Health and Max Special Attack with Modest Nature. Now that I've poisoned the Barra Scooter, right, my next hit is is a guaranteed crit, right? Anytime the opponent is poisoned, it's a crit with Merciless. I actually really, really like Merciless. I hope, uh, you know, I really hope that a couple other Pokemon actually get this ability in the future. Like, I'm thinking stuff like, I don't know, Nido King or Nido Queen? That'd be pretty crazy, right? Anyway, we're going to go Dynamax Toxpex this time. We're going to be running an offensive Toxpex, and I'm going to go for a Max Ooze here, right? Because I thought, if I can get that Max Ooze going in a crit, like, it'll be fairly powerful with a Life Orb there. So Drill Run's going to do nothing to me there. The only thing I was really worried about was a critical hit there, and Barrascooter is going to go down, which is very, very good there. is a very speedy uh, physical attacking Pokemon. So getting the guaranteed crit there from the Merciless and boosting my special attack by one stage. Now, I take it out half the team. However, I've lost half my team too. Nearly, I mean, I've nearly lost my Toxmas. Now, we've got the Berserker coming in. I'm thinking, okay, what's Berserker going to be able to do to me, right? And then it's going to go for a Dynamax. So, its main stab steel is not going to be very effective. Uh, and usually, it has like a fighting type move. That's not going to be very effective either. So, maybe they're going to try and set up for me and just take me out there. I only have like a bit of health left, right? And I don't have really the bulk of a normal Toxpex. Normally, Toxpex will run like max health and max defense or max health and max special defense, right? It'll be very, very bulky. So, here we got the Berserker go for a max knuckle there. Obviously, going to try and boost their attack there. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but the next hit will do uh, lots of Toxpex, right? Now, it's going to get an attack boost there. I went for the Max Geyser here. I know this one's not going to be a critical hit, unfortunately, because I couldn't actually poison it because it's a steel type. However, it does a lot of damage there, so I'm very, very uh, happy with how much that did, right? Now, that's also going to put the rain on the field, too. Now, the next hit is definitely going to take the Berserker out. However, I've only got a little bit of health left, unfortunately. So, here comes the Max Steel Spike from the Berserker. Obviously, he goes Steely Spirit. I lived on two health. I wish it was one. However, my next uh, Max Geyser is going to take out the Berserker. And at the same time, right, the Life Orb is going to take out the Toxpex. So we are actually going to have a double Dynamax KO at the same time. I was very proud of the Toxpex special set there. It worked really, really well. I've actually had a lot of success with uh, special Toxpex. Like, no one really expects it to do any, like, incredible damage there at all. And unless on the, like, on the special side, right? So I've had a lot of nice surprise KOs. So a double uh, KO there on the Dynamax. Now, the next Pokemon here is a Toxpex. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for Crocodile. So this is probably one of the most gimmicky sets on my team because... My Crocodile pretty much get KO'd like a lot of the time. So we've got a Fling, Shadow Claw, Focus Energy, and Stone Edge uh, sort of set here, right? What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making use of my ability Anger Point. If I get critted right, Anger Point will allow me to get a plus six in attack, right? So I wanted to do something fun with Toxpex and Crocodile as the last two Pokemon on this team and have the other four with 100% critting moves, right? So what I did is I fling the Lancet Bro to the Toxpex. It's got a chance to actually crit me and it does crit me. Uh, with a knockoff there. Knockoff doesn't do a lot of damage, and Anger Point is going to kick in, giving me a insta plus six in attack. Now, to top it off, I'm going to go for the Focus Energy here. 
better, and that is going to give me an extra crit chance of two stages. Now, the other moves are on my team, on my Crookedile's uh, moves that right, if you probably noticed, were moves that had a chance of critting. However, those moves that have a chance of critting now have a 100% chance. So I've got Shadow Claw and I've got Stone Edge, right? So we're at the maximum stages of a critting here. So I've got a plus six Crookedile, and I've got a 100% crit rate on both my moves. Obviously, I pick moves that have a crit rate, right? So I didn't pick Crookedile's best moves, like Earthquake, right? That was part of the challenge. So I'm very excited at the moment. I've got a plus six on this Crookedile. Unfortunately, this Toxpex did a very good job of actually, uh, you know, stalling me up with Baneful Bunker. They got a couple of Baneful Bunkers here in a row, which was very unfortunate because there was still one more Pokemon left. Not that I was super worried about it, but I didn't want to get on a low amount of health if something really bad happened or it's like a surprise item like a choice scarf or something like that, right? So here comes a third Baneful Bunker. It's going to fail this time. Stone Edge is going to land on the Toxpex and it gets absolutely annihilated there. That was a plus six crit Stone Edge. Rest in peace, Tox Effects. Now, there was one more Pokemon left here. I'm going to take a little bit more damage of the to uh, from the Toxic. The last Pokemon was Cresselia, and I'm like, this is good. I can go for a Shadow Claw here, which is super effective, and I've got a 100% crit ratio, right? And I've got plus six in the day. So go for the Shadow Claw, and Cresselia, you wouldn't read about it, actually has a Cassaberry, and it absolutely eats that attack so well. Well, look how well that lifted. So we had the Cassaberry. I reckon that was max health and max defense, and it's going to send my Crocodile to the moon. First Crocodile on the moon, people, I think. Anyway, so Crocodile's going to go down there. I got to admit, I was very, very salty, and I was trying not to laugh at the same time uh, when I was proud. That was so funny, but so sad. It completely denied my sweep. My last Pokemon is Urshvi. I'm going to go for the Wicked Blow, which is a 100% crit ratio, and, and that's going to obviously take the Cresselia out on the lower man health. But what a crazy battle to start off this team. Uh, the EVs on my Urshfu were max speed and max attack. It was kind of similar to the other Urshfu, right? And thank you for Battle Zudigan, whoever you are. If you do ever watch this video, thank you for the battle. And uh, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from some of my opponents. All right, the next battle, this one's also on the uh, Wycom. We got a battle against uh, Jade Dog. And we got a uh, pretty scary team here. We got a Lycanroc lead. So I lead with Nine Tails this time. I was a little bit wary this thing could actually go for any sort of rock move and completely destroy me, right? Like a Cell Rock, uh, Rock Side Stone Edge. Um, it could also set up Stealth Rock itself, right? So firstly, I'm gonna be going for the Veil here and outspeed it, which is really cool. So that's gonna help, right? Uh, the item I've got on this is Citrus Berry, if I didn't already save it. I actually would have seen that in the first part, right? So here comes the Rock Side. Rock Side definitely would have taken me out if I did not get the Veil up, right? So eating my Citrus Berry, that's gonna give me a little bit more health back. So I can almost maybe live the next Rock Side. It's gonna be very, very close. So Lycanroc's going to get hit there by the hail. And now it's going to go for the Acelra. Acelra is not going to take me out. And I'm going to go for the Frost Breath here. Now, unfortunately there, a Nine Tower special attack isn't amazing. So Lycanroc lives that one reasonably well there. And it's going to be able to outspeed me the next Acelra. There. Nothing I can really do at this point in the game. Uh, however, I thought about swapping there. But I just actually stayed in and went for Frost Breath again. And I took them out. So essentially, right, they definitely thought I was going to swap there into another Pokemon. Pokemon and went for the more powerful rock side, right? So that was just lucky there. I thought I'll just leave it in and they expected a swap, so they over predicted there. Anyway, next Pokemon is the um uh, it's a Zacian run. I almost called it something else there. I'm not sure. Um, we got the Nartars going down to the Behemoth there. And that's obviously going to take me out like super, super easy there. I was actually going to call it Zeb Streaker. But it's not even in the game, right? I, got, I actually really, really miss Zeb Streaker. That's a really cool Pokemon. Anyway, so going to my special Toxpex here. They're going to go for a Behemoth Blade. I actually thought they might swap or go for a Sword Dance. But they're just going to attack me, right? Now, I can't actually poison them, which sort of sucks. So I can't make use of Merciless at this point in the game. So I just went for the Hydro Miss there, which is going to land. Now, Hydro Pump does a lot of damage. It was actually a clear two-hit KO, or very, very close, right? So the Hail, unfortunately, is going to stop. So I'm not going to get some extra damage yet. Now, the Veil is also going to go. They, however, are going to swap out their Pokemon. And they went into Reggie Leggy. So I'm like, okay, different Ground-type move coming. Uh, sorry, Electric type move coming our way. That's the thing about Toxpex. You've got to watch out for the ground type moves and the electric type moves, right? So go for Hydro Pump on the swap there and Reggie Lecky gets absolutely destroyed in one shot. Like, this Toxpex is absolutely wild. Next Pokemon to come in is the Glastria. Um, sorry, the Calyrex Ice Rider. My bad. Um, they're all horses. You know, you feel me, right? And uh, they're going to have their abilities pop up for 69 years. Now, what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to swap out the Toxpex and I'm going to go into my Urshfu, right? Now, this is my 
This is my Surging Strikes Urshree with the King Troc, if I didn't mention what my item was. Instead of going for a physical move, it went for a, a special move. I was like, wow, special color X. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like the way this person thinks. So go for the Surging Strikes here. I'm hoping I can get some, like, King's Rock flinch. Like, maybe one will be very handy because Color X Ice Rider is really, really thick, right? So I'm going to need, like, another one or two to take it out. Unfortunately, I do not get a flinch there. And it's going to take me out with a Giga Drain and get a little bit of health left. So I was like, oh, man. This is nice. They're running a special. I will give them props for running the special color X because that's something that I would do, right? So down goes my Urge Fruit. Unfortunately, I never really got to get a lot of flinches with Surging Strikes. I think like one battle I did, but it was an absolute wipe. I think I destroyed them by 5-0 and it wasn't really worth uploading. Okay, next Pokemon is Crew. I was like, you know what? Let's go for the fling. Let's get the Lancet Berry strategy rolling again. If I can lift this Giga Drain, we're good to go, people. So anyway, uh, we're going to have the uh, Lancet Berry activating there on the color X and and it's going to use Glacial Lance. It was a mix set. You wouldn't believe it. Our Bocci Crocodile is not going to be living that attack. Like, even if it wasn't a crit, I wasn't even going to be living that one anyway. That, that would have taken out Crocodile's entire family. So down goes the Crocodile there. Sad face. I've only got three more Pokemon left, right? And I've only taken out two of theirs. So things are pretty desperate at the moment, right? Now, the next Pokemon I'm going to be swapping in is my Toxpex. I was confident I could live a Psychic, a Giga Drain, and a Glacial Lens. So here comes the Psychic there. I do live that one, which is very, very good. And I went for Toxic. Instead of going for Hydro Miss, I thought Toxic would be a better play there. Because I'd rather poison it and get some sort of damage over the time than nothing, right? Um, at this stage, I was thinking maybe they'll go for a Psychic again. And then I could actually swap into my own Urshifu and see if I could get some sort of strategy going here. So I went into my Urshifu hoping they went for a Psychic, and they did. Since I'm a Dark type, that's not going to affect me. And they're going to get another round of the Toxic, which is very, very good. Now, I've got Subtute on this set. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to go for an Urshifu, and I'm going to use this G-Max form, right? I thought to use both the G-Max uh, ones in this battle, too. I thought it could be a bit of fun. I don't normally use these Pokemon, too. So enjoy it while you can, right? So I'm going to use my signature move. It. I must admit, these do look really cool on G-Max. They look a lot better than uh, just their normal sort of uh, forms, right? So I'm going to go for my G-Max one blow here. I've got to take Calyrex out. I mean, it's no joke at the moment. It's a no joke team, and that is enough to take it out, which is very, very good there. Getting that super effectiveness. So bye-bye, Calyrex, uh, Ice Rider. It was good to get rid of you, but uh, I will give them some props there. Nice job running on the special stuff. He got me there for a minute. Next Pokemon is the Celesteela. So I was like, okay, Celesteela. This is definitely going to be Dynamax. It might be like a uh, one of those weakness policy, uh, just uh, max airstream sets, which is super, super bulky. Then they get a lot of like, uh, they get beast boost up and they just completely destroy the rest of your team. Like a very, very powerful, uh, you know, Dynamax Pokemon to sell a sell. That in fact, like a lot of the, uh, you know, Ultra Beasts were very powerful at Dynamax, right? So go for G-Max one blow again. I figured it probably about a, you know, three... About a three to four hit KO, depending on what sort of set it was, but it was about a three, so I was like, okay, that's fine. Now we got the max steel spike coming from Stella Steeler. Doesn't do a lot of damage to me. Now, the only good thing that's going to come out of this, right, they are going to get defensive boost. However, uh, my move outside of, uh, obviously, outside the G Max there, uh, Wicked Blow is going to crit, which will do some nice damage there. So I go for another one there, and Stella Steel is almost in range for me to actually take out here. So another max uh, steel spike from the Stella Steel is putting me around the half health mark here, right? Now, that's my last turn of my G-Max Urshifu, and he's going to be going small again. What one do you like better? Do you like the do you like the red or the blue uh, G-Max color? So what I thought here, since it's got one more turn to go, let's go for Substitute, right? Stall out that last turn of Dynamax so it's not as bulky, right? And then go for Wicker Blow afterwards and see what's going to happen. So I'm going to be able to take that one there. Celesteela is going to get a boost in its special defense. Now, the great thing about this team, right, is if the opponent got any boost in defense or special defense or whatever, right, um, I could get past that with all the critical hit uh, moves on this team, which is really, really nice. So we're going to go for the Wicker Blow here. I think I like Surging Strikes a little bit better for the move animation than that one. It still looks cool, but I like Surging Strikes a bit better if I was to compare the two. So Celesteela is going to go down there. I played that pretty well there. I guess they were unlucky, a little bit unlucky there because I was able to get around all the defensive boosts. So the uh, last couple of Pokemon here we have is the Eternatus and we got the Zacy on left. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do as much damage here as I can with the Wicker Blow. I know that I won't take Eternatus out. It's Eternatus, right? Um, I do half health and you know what? I was pretty happy with that. Now Eternatus is going to go for the Eterna Beam here. Then I started to think about one thing. I'm right, wait, they've lost... 
They've lost Celesteela. They've lost Calyrex. They've lost Regilecki. And they've lost Lycanroll, right? They can't Dynamax. They've got no, like, they've got no options to actually Dynamax. I think maybe if they took my Urshfu out, they were going to Dynamax after that. So they sort of lost their, all their opportunities to Dynamax. Like, uh, unless we get a G-Max uh, a turn to see, which would be super funny. Oh, my God, fingers low-key crossed. Okay, we're going to go to Throw here. And like I said, Throw didn't get much of a chance in the first battle. But, boy, Throw got a good chance in this second battle. Now, this Throw, um, I got actually quite a few sweeps with this Throw set. I'm not actually sure if I've done it throw sweep on YouTube yet. Maybe someone wants to search that up, but um, I got a lot of sweeps. It's, it's, it's very bulky and fairly easy to do if the opponent doesn't have a like, ghost type around. Even resisted Pokemon were getting absolutely destroyed because it had like plus six in attack and it was always a crit too, right? So now we got the Eternatus going for a Turner Beam here. Now this is a max health, max special event throw. Now if you've not used throw before, throw is incredibly bulky in health. And it's got so much health, and I gave it max special defense. And I've got a Moranga Berry too, which is going to further bolster its special defense. So what Moranga Berry does, if you get hit by a special move, it kicks in and raises your special defense by one stage. Obviously, those are uh, you know stat boosts are going to wear off if you swap out your Pokemon, etc. Right. So they're going to be recharging with the Eternal Beam. This is going to give me a rare opportunity to go for the bulk ups here. Now there was that Zacian, right? And I'm thinking, if it's got Sacred Sword, sure, if it's got Sacred Sword, that's fine. I believe I can live a Sacred Sword, and I should be okay, right? I've got to remain in enough health, though, for it to come in. So I have to make sure that I've got all of my health, or a big chunk of my health when it comes in and uses that, right? Or let's say get a crit on Behemoth Blade. That was the only real thing I was worrying about with Zacian, right? Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go for a rest on throw, and we're going to be uh, pretty good here. Now, the cool thing about this throw set, I forgot to mention this, this had Mole Breaker as the ability. So if I come across any Pokemon that stopped sort of critical hits, right, I can swap this in and get my critical hits because I would actually get rid of their ability or nullify their ability, which I thought, you know, was pretty cool on this team, right? The ability to have a move that's 100% critted and an ability to nullify those abilities like uh, you know, shell armor and stuff like that. So Throw is going to be sleeping here and he's going to be going for a, hopefully go for a, like an attacking move. I was, I was hoping, fingers crossed, well, three fingers crossed, and I get rest, which is really, really unfortunate here. Now, the Eternatus did have a form of recovery being leftovers. So, like, I'm not sure why they didn't have Black Sludge for, but um, regardless, it's still, we're still getting some recovery back there. So they're going to go for Flamethrower. Flamethrower is going to do nothing. I pretty much had this Eternatus walled at the moment. But the thing about this is they had to be very careful if they wanted to swap it into my throw, right? Now, we're going to get another bulk up here. So, bulk up is going to pretty much make this throw indestructible. And if Zaceon comes in and uses Behemoth Blade, it's not going to do much damage, right? Even if they get a plus one on swapping in, it's not going to do a lot. And then they're going to have to risk actually getting hit by one of my moves, right? So, Eternatus is going to go for another Eterna Beam here. So, I pretty much thought, okay, they're just going to stay in. Do as much damage as possible, then swap in their Zacian at the end and see if they can take me out, right? The only thing I was really worried about here was a crit from a Eternabe, because Eternabe is a very, very powerful attack. Like, that's still doing a lot of damage considering throws health and the special defense boost uh, that it's got, and the health, e uh, sorry, the special defense EVs that I gave it. So getting another bulk up there, I think that could be my fifth or sixth bulk up on throw now. I think in the past I was going to do a... Um, a Sesame Street team, and I called Throw Ernie. I thought that was a pretty good name for it. Uh, you know, like uh, Bert and Ernie. It's been it's been a minute since I watched uh, Sesame Street, and that, and that dude in the bin. What was his name? Oh, that's really annoying, man. What was his name? It's uh, Oscar. That was the one in the bin. The one in the bin. So you had Big Bird, the uh, Oscar, and Bert and Ernie. Man, this is this is amazing. I don't know. I, I, I feel like I've got to go check my playlist after and see if I've done a Sesame Street day. Anyway, back to the battle here. We're going to swap on the Eternatus into the Zacian here. I'm going to be sleeping because I was like, oh no, I hope I don't get rest and like sleep talk rest like twice in a row because this could be override. On the swap, I get the Storm Throw, which is 100% crit here, and Zacian is going to go down in one shot. That pretty much there spelt doom for my opponent. I mean, it was, it was a gutsy swap there. I could have easily have got, like, Sleep Talk rest twice in a row, and they could have destroyed me with, like, two Sacred Swords there. Like, that could have definitely happened. So the last Pokemon here is the Eternatus. They're going to go for a Dynamax Cannon. Obviously, they don't want the, uh, you know, the cooldown of the Eterna Beam. They just want to keep attacking me, right? So Throw is going to be asleep. I've got one more turn of asleep here. And now I'm going to start attacking this Eternatus, right? So hoping I get an attacking move here and I get another bulk up. Oh, that was my sixth bulk up there. I couldn't remember if I had six or, uh, six or five, right? 
He was still doing a lot of damage. So we are down to two minutes left on this game here. It was actually a very, very long game. It went almost like right down to the end, right? So we got the Tetris going for another Dynamax Cannon. Dynamax Cannon at this point was about a four to five hit KO, right? So I wasn't really worried about it that much, right? About, yeah, about a five hit KO around there. So four to five. So now I'm going to go for a Storm Throw here on the Eternatus. Hoping it did some pretty good damage. And it's a clear two hit KO on the Eternatus. Maybe, possibly a three hit KO if I got minimum or max damage there, because I do have the leftovers there, and obviously um, I don't have max attack, so it's not doing a much, and Circle Throw obviously is resisted by the Eternus. So they're going to go through a last hurrah Eterna Beam here uh, on my throw. This is going to be their last move, because I'm obviously going to be able to take them out in one to two more shots there. So Eterna Beam is going to hit me pretty hard. We've got 59 seconds of this battle left. Another Eterna Beam, I feel like I'd probably be able to live that one there, and they lived on one health, and they got their leftover recovery. That's pretty much it for the second game, people. It was a very, very close battle there at the end. Um, like, I feel like the MVPs in this battle definitely throw. And definitely my my Oshfu G-Max was pretty cool there. Uh, did some nice damage, too. I added an extra little clip after this as a little bit of a blooper. Maybe I might bring these back every now and then. Hope you enjoyed both these battles, people. I'll catch you tomorrow for another theme team. Peace out.